We'll look at the Ozone 6 Exciter module now to help add a little extra enhancement to the upper frequencies of a mix. That said, it's not restricted to the high frequencies. It is also effective when you want to add a little boost or presence to your mid frequencies and, to a degree, the low frequencies too. Additionally, if you have quite a sterile mix, and I have, I'll play it in a moment, well, if we do have quite a sterile mix, often encountered when mixing entirely within a door, well, you can employ the exciter to add warmth across our four frequency bands. And we do any of this by initially choosing between tube or tape model saturation. Furthermore, we can utilize new triode modes to emulate the analog warmth associated with vintage preamps. In fact, the six available modes offered to us are accessed by clicking on any of these mode labels underneath our crossover display. You can choose between warm, and this will generate even harmonics that rapidly dissipate, or retro, and this is based on transistors and features a decaying row of odd harmonics. By contrast, tape, well, this mimics saturated analog tape and produces an odd harmonic brighter sound. Choosing tube, well, this will produce a clear tonal excitation that emphasizes dynamic or transient attacks. Choosing triode here from the two, well, as alluded to a moment ago, this very closely models a tube circuit to produce analog warmth. It's more subtle than the dual triode mode that models a full tube circuit. Consequently, the dual triode mode produces a more noticeable, overdriven, or warmer tone. Whichever mode you choose, if your PC's processing power is up to it, and I think most are these days, well, engage oversampling because you'll increase the quality of the exciter. Now, as I'm sure you'll be aware, or will have guessed by now, adjusting up an individual band's color coordinated amount will add the mode's type of excitation to that band. Now, if you want to drive the band's excitation level harder than you would normally do to generate more harmonic enhancement, you can always blend the excited signal with your original track using the mix slider. Now with this exciter module, we get two horizontal views, our multiband view, and we also see a post filter view. With it selected, we now see a single band low pass filter view. You can then drag this node around to adjust the frequency and gain of the low pass filter. The result is the filter gets applied to the entire exciter module all the bands so that we can further adjust high frequencies generated by the exciter. I'm going to play this rather sterile recorded mix and see what I can do whilst adjusting the amount for the various different bands and possibly I'll overcook it, shall we say, for some of the high frequencies but blend it down by using the mix slider. Anyway, let's have a listen. Here we go. Okay, now I think it's a little bit better. It's still not quite right, but I do like using this exciter module with it. It has brought it to life a little bit. And in combination with other modules, I'm sure I can rescue this rather sterile mix. Now, just before I close here, I do want to point a couple of things out. This doesn't solely apply to the exciter module. It's more of a universal setting, but it's as well to tell you here, seeing as I've made quite a number of changes. 
If I come right down here, you're going to see this row of buttons. If you click on this one, the history button, you'll now see a history list within this floating panel of all the different changes that I've just gone and made whilst I'm processing this track. So you can always go back and undo some of this. I'm not going to, I just wanted to point it out to you for the moment. And in fact, if I want to delete this history, then of course by clicking on here allows me to do just that. And I'll close it down. Okay then, so that's the Exciter module. And as I say, a really useful module when you want to add that little bit more sonic enhancement by adding some sparkle or even some warmth to individual frequency bands.